Welcome to QDL. QDL is your look and who and what is making the news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. Well, you know, every now and then, uh, it's nice to take a look at ISO 9001 and other QMS standards uh, from the perspective of someone who helps develop them. Uh, so, you know, you know, ISO 9001 2015 has been around for a while, and there are potentially some changes afoot in the QMS standard. And today we are happy to have back on the show, uh, Mike McLean, uh, a management consultant and a member of TC176. And TC176, as most of you probably know, is the technical committee that is responsible for ISO 9001 and uh, other things. So, uh, Mike, welcome back to the show. Hi, good night, Doug. Nice to be back. <laughs> oh, great. So, um, as I just said, you sit on uh, ISO TC uh, 176, and I think you were telling me uh, the reason you're on the on the show here today is that there is a task force working on future concepts that could be considered for inclusion in the next revision of ISO 9001. So, can you maybe give us a little sneak peek of what we might see? Uh, sure, Doug. There's there's been a lot of talk about this revision uh, as many of your readers and listeners are quite aware. And one of the things that's obviously been uh, in the context, as they say, the context of the organization, the TC176, which is our quality management and quality assurance, is that trying to understand the changing landscape and the environment which organizations are facing. Um, and that includes not only the, the larger corporates, uh, but also the, the small, medium-sized enterprises, but also the micro businesses. And the reason for saying that is that the, the organization, the ISO and TC176, has a number of members that re represent many nations. As you know, it's over 150 nations. And they're all different experts and they're getting the feedback, including you know, what's happening in all these businesses about the changing context and how they're trying to operate and lift their game. So one of the things that we conducted last year, and it was a worldwide survey, was on what did people want to do with the you know, ISO 9001 you know, document? Is it uh, at a stage that it should be revised? And there was a slight majority saying, no, we'll just leave it for the time being. And if I, if I just may just take that apart, what was found was some people are actually getting non-accredited certification they're getting certified by organizations that actually aren't part of the International Auditing Forum or that their countries have had rogue uh, certifications and therefore the, the, the customers are, are not sure that they've actually got um, a management system from their suppliers that they can have visibility of their processes, which has become a bit of a, uh, a constraint, you know, the old you know, Kurt Lewin force field analysis. So there's a constraint, but there's an opportunity here. So they've seen some risk and opportunities to leave the ISO 9001 as it is, but they're cognizant of what's on the horizon, you know, the three horizon strategy stuff. So they've looked at artificial intelligence, innovation management, knowledge management, and other things like collaboration. So what some of the bigger companies are looking for is organizations that collaborate that interface with you know, their businesses, but also themselves. So BNX Automotive, you know, that functionality stuff, part production approval process, you know, kind of thinking and disciplines, how organizations interface at a local level and then supply at a larger level in a collaborative way. So ISO 44001 has kind of lifted the game, but also ISO has a document called supply chains. And in that document about the supply chain, that's part of what we've looked at about having accredited certification, make sure the auditors are auditing this, you know, the company's processes and that they meet the requirements of not only one management system standard, which is in this case ISO 9001, but because we were, I was on the team for the high level structure now called the harmonized structure, there's a, there's a clause in a requirement 5.1, which says, top management shall integrate XXX requirements into the organization's business processes. So the reason for saying that in context, uh, Dirk, is that we are trying to make sure that people actually get their management system to be developed and documented and audited by their processes and that they get value out of that management system 
and are able to lift their game to be part of a world, a, a bigger world supply chain. And as we've just had COP, you know, uh, over in Glasgow, I won't speak in a Glaswegian accent. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can't understand that. <laughs> but um, part of that is that sustainability environment and, and what we want to do in regards to the, the changing climate um, and, and these things and emissions, it's all part of the context of what um, ISO uh, Technical Committee 176 is well aware of. And if I may say, I'm a management consultant, but I used to work as a li- for a living once in um, ITT in Australia and around the world, uh, Bell Telephone and uh, Tanaco and Rio and all those other companies. But on the TC 176 committee, there's a lot of people that are actually not just consultants or auditors, but they're drawn from really large organisations. So sometimes when people get you know, some criticism for TC176, they, they're not quite aware that the number of people that are in it aren't just consultants or auditors. They're actually really big businesses, Boeings and Talos and Cisco's of the world. And within that, you know, Veolia, you know, so there's some really large organisations that kind of get involved to kind of help us to revise documents, including what we should do with ISO 9001. So it's on the it's on the agenda. We're quite aware of it. And uh, we're looking forward to getting some more feedback over the next few months and preparing what may be some revision, uh, potential revision later on the uh, down the track. So what, what, what might some of these, I mean, can you tell us what some of these changes might actually be? I mean, you know, specifically or? So, one of the future trends and future concepts and potential issues that is coming up is on innovation. So innovation, as we know, is very important. And organ- uh, there was some research done you know, by uh, Simmons, and he found that the most um, innovative, creative companies are the ones that have, have the most deg- degree of control, that they understand their business. Um, and also, if you have it stable and capable, as um, I'm sure you have experts who talk about process stability and process capability on uh, many times and obviously within Quality Digest. So what they want to know is, is the organisation stable and capable? So if they wanted to do a future thing of innovation, they best understand their own business. So if I use artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, these these items that are on the horizon for organisations are very important. Same as blockchain, even here, cryptocurrencies. There's a lot of things that we are aware of that we have to be have it on our radar so that we can embed that within the possible revision for 9001, but also that people appreciate that if they have a stable process that's capable of meeting one, but many customers' requirements, process capabilities, um, perhaps, that the quality of that process and the output being the product or service is, is pretty good. Because one of the things that happens is we're aware of, say, the lean manufacturing, you know, the industrial engineering work simplification uh, pedigree, that unless you have your quality right and you do all this new concepts and artificial intelligence, net of things and additive manufacturing and all those types of uh, technologies that are coming through, then unless you have your process stable, capable, and you're making good product, and then you put on new technology and innovation, Sadly, as I learned when I was over in Canada, listening to a presentation by General Motors, um, the, the vice president of Cadillac, she said, as Toyota reviewed their business, they said, unless you get the robots right, the innovation right, and getting the people engagement right, I fear for you. And he was saying something, I fear that you'll make what you do badly quicker. <laughs> and, that's what, and, and so that's one of the things that we're aware of the people grasp this understanding of quality in the process. I had the pleasure last week of listening to the European Organization for Quality and a, an executive from Toyota. And it's a really new concept of building quality, you know, design thinking. Well, you've got to build in the quality in the design. And uh, my friend, Mike Antleitner, over there in Texas uh, with Livonia Technical Services and um, his colleague, uh, Dr. God rest his soul, um, Howard, Dr. Howard Aaron, uh, he was saying things like, unless you understand this and you get this kind of thing out of your head about problem solving all the time, if you're doing too much problem solving, you know, quality circles and Six Sigma and all that, you're probably addicted to it. You're probably 
aren't doing your FMEAs right, you're probably not going upstream to get your design right, as the Toyota executive was saying, building quality. So they are still doing total quality management and the science of statistical quality control. And that thinking about getting the marketing right, getting the product development right, and the production system right, for Toyota, the central thing is still TQM and the science of statistical quality control and quality circles. So we're aware of some of the innovations. We're aware of artificial intelligence and innovation that has to be kind of embedded. Technology is going to play a big part. And we've seen it, as you know, with some of your um, presentations and also articles, the use of drones and robots. Um, they're doing things that is sometimes dangerous for a human to get involved with going into dangerous places. So <clears throat> some of our clients are very small. So they are looking at robots and how to use intelligence and technology, but they still have to get ISO 9001 certification, accredited of course, so that they can actually supply that service and product to their customers because it's just the entry ticket. So unless you have certification, you can't do all these other things. So it's a bit of a yin and a yang. <laughs> right. You know, you, you, you brought up context uh, earlier and, and actually we, you've already mentioned, I mean, just talking several different aspects of context. Uh, one of the biggest contexts we've had, obviously, over the last uh, year and a half, two years has been the pandemic, um, which has really brought a lot of things to the fore. And, and so with so many, let's say, constraints and risks emerging in the supply chains, as we have uh, seen, and, and uh, concerns about an organization's you know, capabilities. You just mentioned resilience, uh, cybersecurity disruptions. There's another one. Um, how does a QMS actually help an organization have better governments and to manage these risks as they come along? Dirk, this is ironic. We're having this discussion. As you know, I was uh, I had uh, the opportunity to present regards the Integrated Use of Management System Standards Handbook back in, which was now published now in 2018. So you just mentioned, I'll use the word governance. So ISO has just re released a guideline called ISO 37000 regards governance of organisations. The business resilience regards ISO 22301, I think it is, or 321. So organisation resilience is important in this period. How do we do just not organisation resilience? but human resilience. So ISO 45,003 in regards psychological mental health. So what's happening is ISO has had a lot of experts really scanning the environment all the time, understanding what's happening. And if I use that cybersecurity one, Dirk, that you just mentioned, I'm involved with um, Macquarie University, the graduate school here in Australia, and also the University of Michigan. So, so what we're looking at is cybersecurity in the supply chain. Because as you see off the coast of uh, Los Angeles is all the container ships that can't dock. And we've got the same issue over in China. And even in Australia, um, we, we import a lot of kind of containers. We also export a lot of uh, minerals like coal and iron ore and bauxite and, <laughs> and other things uh, which we're working on. But you know this supply chain issue about cybersecurity and making sure that it's right, even within the you know, work we do in defense, in infrastructure and other organizations, they are so, so sensitive to cybersecurity that we have, you know, ISA 27001. We have ISA 27001 as part of the defense and infrastructure utility sector to be certified. But they also want them to be collaborating, which is ISA 44001. But they also want them to have cybersecurity. So by the time you keep on adding all these things, right. It becomes onerous, and, and ISO TC 176 understands that. So the reason for the integrated use of uh, management system standards 2008, which was uh, the, convened by Dr. Kevin Foley, and I took over as he gradually retired in 2016 to 2018, and with the team around the world that we had, we are aware that organisations have a management system. That is the system to manage their business. So sometimes the communication by ISO, and they're not completely you know, without sin, so to speak, it looks as though they are just flooding the market with too many management system standards. And we're aware of that. 
like we've got a guideline for organisation change management, or there's something on the financial benefits of ISO 9001. So Gavind, who's uh, the convener of that, so we've just finished that and quality tools and statistical techniques. <clears throat> so they can look as though, excuse me, there's too many standards. So the integrated use of management system standards was, was given us a framework, a body of knowledge from you know, over 100 companies around the world to say, understand your business, its context, as you said, Dirk, its processes, the risk. So ISO 31,000 guidelines, they're not a standard to be ordered against, they were kind of embedded, ISO 31010. There's also the risk management techniques. So what you're seeing is those things to understand risk under the high level structure, now called the harmonized structure, as I said, in clause 6.1. So the senior management have to integrate risk and opportunities within the organization's business processes. So for organizations to kind of cut through the chaff, so to speak, of all these standards, if they just understand their business and their processes, all those things that kind of happen with standards can be integrated into their business system and have one system. So, well, I, was going to, I, I want to jump here a little bit because you, you, you've kind of touched on, you know, you mentioned all these, all these different standards, all mm -hmm. these different quality management system standards, and some companies have to meet you know, one, two, three, five uh, different, different standards, depending on what they got, they got going on. Um, and, and I know you've, you've mentioned, uh, I, I believe you mentioned, or you told me earlier, uh, you guys have got a, 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 a ISO 9001 brand integrity task group that's yep. kind of addressing this. But what are you seeing out in the field? This is what I want to know is, are companies just kind of throwing up their hands and just going, I don't know, I guess I'll just do each of these standards and do the best I can? Or are they really trying to make an effort to understand their processes and understand how to, to integrate uh, all of these different quality management system standards? What are you seeing out in the field? The, we see it every day, Dirk, and the members on the ISO 9001 Brain Integrity, my co-convener is Mark Braham from over in the UK. Um, he's with Veolia, so a big waste recycling and garbage collection, you know, waste um, organisation. Um, our, our secretary or committee manager is Dr. Darrell Yannick, and he and all of us that are on the brain integrity, and there's many of us around the world, we, we are seeing in the field people that get it and they, they start to wonder why it's such a problem because they understand their business processes and any management system standard, be it ISO, or non-ISO, so the Integrated Use of Management System Standards Handbook, which we realised in ISO, we haven't well communicated that. We need to get some communication about it out. But I, we, we just helped an organisation who is a Fortune 500 company, has an operation in Australia by way of example. So they have ISO 9001. They have ISO 45001 for Occupational Health and Safety. They have ISO 22000, which is the food safety standard. They have 14001, environmental management. So you start to say, my goodness, how can they operate? But they also have to meet good manufacturing practices. They also have to have hazard analysis and critical control points accreditation. They got a NATA, what we call the laboratory, ISO 17025. Right. 17025, yeah. Laboratory within their business. Who do they supply? nearly every food company that is operating in Australia, but also AstraZeneca and also the German drug companies, the Japanese drug companies. So what we're seeing in the field is organisations that get it, don't understand and see a problem. Those who don't understand business processes and having an accredited certification of that system and integrated whatever requirements into your business processes, they, they think that's too hard. But the, the research says that those that actually understand their business and want to improve, we have another document, which is probably one of the better documents we've ever developed in ISO, ISO 9004, 2018. And that's about the organization's kind of self-assessment. And it's based on the 31 so-called criteria and a five-level process maturity model. So you, how can they, the people that have a good process-based management system and they get something like the ISO 9004 to do an assessment of their business processes, it's fantastic, not a problem. But if you've copied the standard in regards to its clauses 
instead of by document integrating those clauses and its requirements into your processes, looking at some of these standards, it's like oil and water. I don't yeah. get it. You know, yeah. that's what the field's at. What's all this stuff? So we are well aware of that. And not only just ISO TC 176, but other parts of ISO is looking at the, our communication. I, as you said, Burke, in regards to 9001 brain integrity, um, we're still going with that. We just had that endorsed to continue to make sure we gather more field information. You know, it's like um, we changed from fact-based decision-making in the eight quality management principles down to seven. And as you know, in the, in the um, COVID-19 period, it's not just fact-based. As you know, there's sampling standards. Or who got the fact? Why is it you saying it's a fact? So it's being changed to evidence-based. So we're gathering that evidence-based to make better decisions in TC176. Hey, Mike, uh, before I let you go, um, Ken, is, is there a timeline for the next revision of ISO 9001? I'd like to say there is, but what's happening is we've got the potential revision team. Um, we are still meeting and it's still up in the, um, the air. We've said we're not changing it right now, but there's a task force which has been assembled and I happen to be on it. I'm not the convener, but um, we are actually looking at it um, it's number one hour on the uh, TC176 agenda in many ways. And I, I expect we should have a, a more definitive uh, answer for you, Dirk, and your uh, listeners and readers pretty soon. Um, the, we've got some uh, great leadership now and it's been refreshed and we are looking forward to kind of getting uh, the survey disseminated, which you've, you've pro- your uh, readers have probably seen. And as you see from the survey, it was a big survey. And yep. many organisations and many countries put their, their so-called uh, 20 cents in. And so we, we have got all that information, the statistical analysis that some of the, the uh, TC176 and also the ISO 9001 uh, possible revision team looked at. We did, they did some deep statistical analysis about what's important for developing nations and developed nations, for small or medium enterprises, micro enterprises, large organizations so that kind of landscape and input has been very important for us to now kind of think about in the new year what we should be doing with a possible revision so soon as we know we'll let you know all right (laughs) sounds good uh well mike mclean uh member of tc uh, 176 also a management consultant uh thanks for joining us again always glad to have you on the show it's my pleasure dirk all the best to everybody and for hopefully the a festive new year and, uh, Chris. Sure. and thanks to all of you guys as well for joining us. Uh, if you uh, have anybody you'd like to bring on the show uh, uh, on any topic or some equipment you'd like to bring on the show, just let us know. Email us at qdl at qualitydigest.com. We'll do our best. Thanks for joining us today, and we will see you at the next QDL. So long.